Okay. And let's start with our marching and just get our um, get our pelvic and shoulder girdles moving a little bit. So, I mean, this is even better. You're just going to start marching on the spot. This is even better if you're marching over land because then you actually have that counter rotation of the hips and the shoulders. But we can kind of stimulate it or simulate it, simulate it here by just swinging the arms in opposition and allowing for that natural rotation in your shoulders. So don't be shy. Don't hold your shoulders really stiff. Let them do a gentle rotation. It's kind of a nice, it's like a nice Goldilocks happy medium between rotating them too much and holding them perfectly square. And then ideally, we're gonna breathe in through the nose, right into the back ribs. So we wanna to start to fill out the back of the rib cage with the breath so that our brain already is going towards the kind of floracal lumbar area. So you keep marching and it's gonna be this area. So you're breathing back here, trying to fill these lower ribs and low back out with your breath. Good, and then you wanna keep that feeling of kind of an alive feeling in the back of the rib cage. Take your hands over your shoulders and we'll pump the arms up and down. I haven't said it yet, but let's do quiet feet so that we feel we're articulating through the feet. We're keeping our spine lifted and light. Ribs are lifted away from the pelvis and a nice long neck, which also means easy shoulders. So let the shoulders soften away from the ears a little bit. Good, changing the arms out to the sides. A little reach to the sides and getting some fresh blood pumping through the body. Still breathing into that back thoracal lumbar area. Good, nice work, long neck. Let's take the arms in front, polishing a table. Elbows wide and lifted, chest soft. So by now, if we're getting a little out of breath, you might feel your sternum pushing forward, but relax the sternum and keep breathing into the back body. Good, we'll just do a few rounds of one position of arms each. So you're gonna go once up, one side, once forward, up, side, forward, good. And keep the pace up, keep the breath going, quiet feet, tall lifted spine, ribs lifted away from the pelvis. Of course, it doesn't matter if you mess up the order, you just keep going because it's all about moving and getting our circulation going. So we'll do about five more rounds. Nice work. Good, shoulders easy, chest soft. Ah, good, make this one the last one. Drop your arms. Good, slow your march down a little bit. Ah, good, and go back to that nice swing of the arms, letting the shoulders rotate just a little bit right to left. Ah, wonderful. Okay, so take the feet out wide. We're gonna do infinity symbol arms just because it's a nice way to get into the back. So start shifting your weight. Toes and knees are pointing out. Right arm is gonna start that infinity symbol movement. And I want you to let your rib cage move with the arm so that we feel the right side of the ribs pull gently away from the back of the hip. Okay, shoulders are soft. Good, we're going to allow the eyes to follow. Sternum is soft. Good, your left hand can be wherever it wants to now. Still focusing on the movement of the right back rib cage. Nice work, everybody. Do one more and then start to switch to the left arm and start focusing on the left back ribs. I'm going to think about my uh, lower ribs and low back. And the low ribs are kind of pulling away from the back of the hip. So you don't have to make it really big, but just in the movement of rotating to the right, you pull the ribs away from the back of the hip. Breathe into that area that you're focusing on, like the left lower quadrant of the back. Good, let's do one more. And then we're gonna to transition to a nice side stretch. And I'm gonna get you to look away from the stretch. So looking over the left shoulder when your right arm is reaching, 
and vice versa. And again, feeling the bottom rib on that stretching side, pull away from the top of the hip. It's up to you how big you make this, but we are moving from side to side, so don't hold it for too long in any one position. Nice work. Let's do one more right arm and one more left arm. And then we'll do our sort of spine movement. So come back in with your feet parallel, lace your fingers and press your hands forward. Inhale your arms up. Let's target kind of the lumbar spine. Side bending right, exhale. Inhale up to the center, side bend left. So waistline is side bending. Inhale up to the center, bend your knees and round your lumbar spine. So try to curve the low back. Inhale into it. And then exhale, hands to the low back and let the um, chest open a little bit. And then relax the arms down. We'll do it one more time. So lace the fingers, press forward, inhale the arms up. Feel the movement happen at the lower ribs, exhaling over. Good. Inhale up. Notice what your shoulders are doing. See if you can keep them soft up top. Exhaling left. Inhale through center. Exhale, rounding the tail. I'm a bad example, but think about your low back flexing. And then take the hands to the small of the back and just open the chest for a moment. Beautiful. Relaxing arms down. Okay. Really warming up the lumbar spine now. The legs are going to go out to the sides. Toes and knees turned in. Just swish your hips around for a moment. Find your pelvis. Keep your sternum vertical and your collarbones horizontal. Good. And then land in the center and do posterior anterior tilts. You can use your hands on your body, whatever you need to do to get the pelvis to be moving while the rib cage, shoulder, girdle, neck, and head just stay floating above the movement. That looks really nice. Relax the xiphoid process, right? Make sure that's pointing down towards the floor. And then stay in your posterior tilts. Let's take the arms out to a slightly higher than shoulders, a sort of V. Good, externally rotate and extend the wrist. And then we're gonna slide the low ribs side to side. And I want you to think about the tissues in the lumbar spine and below the bottom rib gliding. Keep it gentle. If your low back is a little sticky, icky, keep it nice and small and make sure you're breathing and even go slower if you need to. Good. We're going to do about four more. Good. Keep exhaling. And next time you're on the right side, stay over on the right, layer on a side bend. Good. And then come all the way back to the center. Then translate the bottom ribs and low back to the left, layer on a side bend, and then come back to the center. Again, translate the ribs to the right and layer on a side bend, and then come back to the center and translate left, layer on the side bend, and come to center. Here we go, putting it all together. Translate first. Layer on the side bend. Now come back to your translation and go through the center to the other side. Layer on a side bend on the left. Find your left translation. Go through the center to the right. Layering on the side bend. Coming up. Translating left. Good. Layer on the side bend. So really gliding and sliding those tissues in the low back. One more time each side. Translate right. Side bend right, find your translation and move it to the left side and side bend left and find your left translation, move it to the center, relax your arms. That was a long time, the arms up, relax the shoulders, bring your feet back in underneath you. Good, and you're just gonna prop yourself up on your hands. We're gonna be doing cat cow on the floor, but just as a nice practice. Draw your chin in and really lengthen the back of your neck. So the neck is really long. The thoracic spine is long. And we're just going to tuck and untuck the pelvis here. So you just prop yourself up on your arms and move your pelvis, tuck and untuck. And try to think about everything from the waistline up being really long, really stretched out. And let the pelvis and move. Notice how your bottom ribs aren't moving. So try to keep the lower rib cage really still for now. 
We'll do about four more of these, keeping the bottom circumference of the ribs still. Not an easy thing to do. And now you get to move just the lower part of the ribs and then back down. So curling the tail under, I'm just waiting to feel my bottom ribs move and then I release. Keep the chin in and neck long, I was doing that poorly. <laughs> Tucking the tail, moving up to the bottom ribs and then releasing. So about four more times, just exploring. Can you even feel when it goes into that lower thoracic area? Maybe two more times. One more time. Good. And then curl your tail under and roll all the way up through your spine. Ah, okay, good. Let's do our standing elbow up. So take your feet parallel. Let's make a tripod on the feet today. So you're going to lift all your toes, push your big toe joint, the middle outer foot, and the inner heel down. So that triangle on the foot. Notice if one foot feels heavier than the other. That's a thing sometimes. Just try to anchor the lighter foot a little more. Turn your shins out and turn your thighs in and don't fixate on anything. Just doing our best of each. So big toe, outer middle foot and inner heel. That's your tripod. Okay, little posterior tilt. Good. Arms coming forward. External rotation, extended wrists. The xiphoid process is pointing down. Ears are over the shoulders. We're gonna take the arms casually up to the ceiling. So make sure your shoulders don't hike up into your ears yet. I want you in your mind to connect your arms right down into your low back. So that's our lats connecting our arms to our low back and pelvis. And then translate your ribs side to side, just gently. Little translation and lift the ribs off the pelvis. So translating and lifting, translating and lifting. And then pause in the middle, lift the ribs off the pelvis more, push the hands against the ceiling. Press the triangle of your feet into the floor. Big toe, outer middle foot, inner heel, shins turn out, thighs turn in. Soft breath, soft xiphoid process. Last 10 seconds, lifting the ribs up, letting the pelvis anchor down through the legs. Last five, four, three eyes are down. Keep everything, but bring your right arm down. Keep your eyes in spine and bring your left arm down. Release your legs, your eyes release last. So release your spine and then the eyes are last. Ah, good, okay. So now we can aim the camera down to the floor and start working on that cat cow, trying to uh, isolate lumbar and uh, pelvis for now. So let's meet on our hands and knees. And this is just, just an awareness exercise. So keep it small, maybe do less than you think you need to do. But your hands are spread out nice and wide. And we're going to draw the chin in and push the head forward so the neck is long. Stretch your spine nice and flat between your shoulder blades in the low ribs. And then just start a tuck and untuck movement in the pelvis. So your posterior anterior tilt. And I want you to imagine as you do that, just the pelvis. That, yeah, <laughs> just the pelvis. That the, I put a sling around your lower ribs and I'm holding them in place. So the lower ribs have a, a wrap around them, holding them still. We're going to do five more times anterior, posterior tilt with the pelvis. And really focus on how your posterior tilt pulls the top of the sacrum away from the lower ribs in the back. Okay, and then go into the low ribs. So let the low ribs round a little bit and then go back down. Curl the tail under, go up to your lower ribs moving, and then go back down. So again, it might be less than you think in terms of movement, but we're just exploring. Can you feel when that cat spine creeps up into the bottom ribs and then release? So we'll do this about three more times. Breathing. Ah, good. Next time you're in the cat spine, so next time you're flexing your low back and the lower ribs, wag your tail slowly from side to side. Keep your chest facing the floor, 
Keep your neck and thoracic spine nice and upper thoracic spine nice and long and try to flex the lower ribs and low back. Wag the tail side to side. Should feel a bit of a stretch as you go side to side. You're trying to hold the spine long. One more time, right and left. Keep the spine centered and long. Good, and that's it. You're gonna release. Change your position sitting on your bum. Legs coming out in front. Nicely done, everybody. Okay, so you can hold on to the backs of the thighs here. Almost the exact same movement. So even more awareness now. Holding on to the backs of the thighs. This time we're just we're not going to go into any anterior tilt. So you're going to stay on the top of your sit bones. Keep your ribs, thoracic spine, neck, and head upright, and just go into posterior tilt and then center. So we go posterior tilt and then center. So essentially you're rolling to the back of your sit bones and then rolling back up to the very center. Those should be a very small movement. The shoulders don't move at all. The spine between the shoulder blades definitely doesn't move. Good. <laughs> We're gonna go a little further into the low back. So see if you can get your lumbar spine below your rib cage to flex, but nothing between the shoulder blades is moving. Just the, the sacrum and the low back. Yeah, it's annoyingly small. We're gonna do three more. It's gonna get more satisfying in a moment. Good, now you can start to go into the lower ribs. So roll back and feel the low ribs start to round and then come back up. So still not moving between the shoulder blades, not moving the neck and head very much, but rolling back towards the bottom of the ribs. And I just really want you to sort of buy into the idea, the image of your hips, the back of your hips pulling away from those back bottom ribs. So we're increasing the distance between those two structures, the bottom of the rib cage and the top of the pelvis. Okay, and then finally, we can roll all the way back between the shoulder blades and then come back up to the top. We'll do that about five times. So it should just feel really nice now. You get to get the, basically the whole spine involved. Make sure your feet stay down in any way. So the outsides of the feet at least stay down. Two more times, ooh, that's a lot of work. Nice work, everybody. Let's see, one more. And then coming up, good. We're gonna do general Eldoa and then a whack load of stretches. So let's lie down on our backs. We're using general Eldoa today as kind of a warm up. So you're gonna lie down. Feel that area we were just working on, the kind of between the pelvis and the rib cage. Uh, low back or columbar area. Let that really relax into the floor here and then pull your knees into your chest. Do what you need to do. Wiggle your hips, wiggle your shoulders, soften your jaw. Of course, we want all the curves of the spine flattened out along the floor and then hold on to the opposite shin and flex your feet. We're going to include all the fascial tensions today. So Shine the soles of your feet to the right. Release your right arm back by your ear in external rotation with a flat palm. Put your left heel down and slide your left leg to straight. Flexing that foot and turning the leg in. Focus on the thoracolumbar area as you breathe in to stretch, long leg and long arm. Exhale, arc the leg up, the long leg up, keeping the thoracolumbar area heavy. And then fold the left knee in and bring your right hand to it. Shine your feet to the left. Release your left arm back by your ear. Good. Put your right heel down and slide that right leg out nice and long. Turning the right leg in. Breathe in as you stretch. Exhale. Anchor the back body down as you arc that right leg up. And then fold the leg in. Bring the hand to it. And we switch right arm and left leg, stretch away from the torso, turn that long leg in. As you exhale, arc the leg up and anchor the back body down more and more and more, and then fold the leg in, bring the arm in. Switching left arm and right leg, everything stretching long, turn that long leg in, 
and exhale the leg up. So you can continue on your own pace or follow along with me. We're gonna do about four more total. So two rounds of right and left. Use your exhale to arc your leg up to the ceiling and use your inhale to stretch the opposite limbs away. The feet should be shining in the direction of the arm that's overhead. The thoracic and lumbar spine should be stretched flat out along the floor. Eyes are down. Nice, everything's looking really good. Next time you have your left arm overhead, that's gonna be your last one. So as you arc your right leg up, fold everything in, relax your feet and then put one foot down at a time. No rush at all. Finish with the left hand, right leg combo. Good, really nice. Okay, so we're gonna roll onto our side when you're ready and come on up to tall kneeling. So here, you may need a, a little cushion for your knee or not, but we'll have the left knee down first and the right foot forward. Okay, so we're going to try and stretch out the lower part of the lats first. So um, again, you're going to think about this kind of like the wings that come up from the low back. Okay, so first we need, and we need to keep a good posterior tilt. So you're going to tuck the pelvis, pubic bones to belly button. Good. Feel where your bottom ribs are and pull them back a little bit. Now to keep this a little out of the hip, because it's not necessarily supposed to be a hip stretch, I want you to just hinge back a little bit. So you're gonna sort of push away from your front leg a little bit, but you're gonna keep a posterior tilt. Then the arms are gonna come out in front and we're gonna try and think of up and over, side bending to the right. So you're gonna lift the left ribs up, up, up away from the hip so much that they side bend. Bring your uh, right arm down inside your right leg and just press it against the inner thigh for a bit of leverage. And then lift your left arm up a little higher, maybe towards the ear. But what you want is to bring the arm at a nice angle that you can feel like you're pulling on the skin and the tissues of the lower back on that left side. So from here, it's up to you. You can add a little more side bend and you can start to round the spine forward a little bit but we're reaching through that left arm. Make sure you're externally rotated in the arm and make sure your head doesn't fall off your spine. So draw your chin in, lengthen the back of your neck, tuck your tail, shift your weight a little bit back. That might also help. We'll hold here for five, four, three. Before you come out of it, keep everything but lower your arm down so it's more parallel to the floor and notice how the stretch changes. Maybe how it goes a little more into the mid back. Then bring the arm all the way down to the floor and roll up through your spine. Good, let's try out the other side. So we'll have the right knee down and the left foot forward. We're gonna do this stretch a couple variations on each side just to see if we find a version we really like. So, we're gonna have the pelvis in a good posterior tilt, pretty strong, and then shift back a little bit. Reach your arms forward, external rotation, extended wrists. Good, now think about lifting the right rib up. So go ahead and lift the right rib up, rib up to side and to the left. Bring your left arm down on the inside of your leg. That's already gonna start to bend you forward. And then bring your right arm up maybe towards your ear and use that arm externally rotated to pull on the flesh and the low back, below that right bottom rib. So now you choose a little more if you'd like, side bend a little more, keep the pelvis tucked, you can flex forward a little more. The right arm is trying to help you pull on that lat in the thoracolumbar area on the right side, breathing into the stretch. The more you tuck your pelvis, the more you might feel. Reach down through the left palm and we'll hold for five, four, three, keep breathing. Now, before you come out, lower the arm down a little bit. Feel how the stretch maybe moves up along the spine and hold there for just a moment just to feel that stretch. 
and then slowly relax the arm down. Good, and come up. Good, switching sides. One more time each side. Like I said, we'll do a little variation here. So left knee down, right foot forward, posterior tilt. Really use your breath in these. See if you can send your breath into the back thoracolumbar lumbar area. Let's take both arms forward. This time, keep your posterior tilt, shift back if you'd like. Rotate both arms past the front leg, so past the front thigh, and then start to round forward, pushing both hands sort of towards the floor. But the trick is you gotta keep that posterior tilt. Good, now in order to target where you want in your back, take your left arm and lift it up a little bit, maybe bringing it parallel to the floor, maybe bringing it higher, and push both arms away from you. So you're using your left arm and its connection to your shoulder blade and down into your back to stretch the left side of the lower back. Breathe in, breathe out, and use your side bend, your flexion, your arms, and your posterior tilt. Good, let's hold for three and two. Before you come out, bring the left arm back down towards the floor. Good, come out of the flexion out of the rotation and relax your arms, relax your pelvis. Great job, yeah, yeah, nice, feels good, yeah? Oh, good, good. <laughs> this is an excellent one if you have curves, if you have scoliosis, this is a really good stretch. Yeah, Woo we've got like <laughs> some fans. Good, so tuck the pelvis under. Here we go, nice tall spine, so same elbow as spine. Arms coming out in front. Good, from here, we're gonna rotate. You can sit back a little bit, by the way, I didn't mention that, but you can press back a bit. Keep your posterior tilt, and then you're gonna flex the upper back forward and try to reach the palms down to the floor without losing your top, right? So really important, keep that posterior tilt. And then slowly start to lift the right arm, maybe parallel to the floor, see how that feels, maybe a little bit higher. Trying to target the stretch into the right lower quadrant of the back. The left arm is also active, so don't lose that. The neck and the head are also active, so draw the chin in, long neck. And then you're using your side bend, forward flexion, and that connection of your right arm down into the back of the pelvis to create the stretch. So I'm going to hold for three and two. Breathe into the stretch. Great job, everybody. Bring that right arm down to the floor. Come gently out of the flexion and rotation. Relax the arms, relax the pelvis, good. And let's just come down to a seated position. And let's wiggle the legs out a little bit for a moment. So you can sit on the back of your sit bones with the legs wide. Your hands are just behind you, but keep your spine pretty tall. Flex your feet and let the knees just drift from side to side. Good, if you feel uh, you need to move your pelvis, then allow your pelvis to rotate a little bit as well. So do what feels good here. We're not doing a hips class, so it doesn't matter to me as long as you're kind of letting some tension go. Lovely. Okay, good, so from here, moving up to uh, higher up in the lats, you're gonna sit either with your legs crossed, or you can sit in a diamond, or you can sit on your heels. And all of those are totally legitimate. You do whatever feels good. This one you all know, I think. So we're gonna take the right arm overhead. You can wave hello to me, good, or forward, good. Catch your elbow with your left hand. Just make sure you're not pushing your neck down. So lengthen your neck and head up into your arm. Tuck your tail, so that posterior tilt again. Side bend to the left and feel how you're pulling your right shoulder blade away from your right thumb. And then keep that side bend and layer on a nice flexion in the upper thoracic spine. So it's like you're trying to go up and over your heart. So then again, we feel the right shoulder blade pulling away from the right thumb. And then if you tug that elbow gently across the top of the head, we just tension the shoulder blade a little more and increase the stretch. You're gonna stay and breathe. And once again, use all of these little pieces to target your stretch. Side bending, forward flexion, pulling the elbow, elongating the neck, tucking the tail, 
Take two more breaths here. Just enjoy the stretch that you've found. Send your breath to the stretching tissues. And then slowly relax the elbow tension. Come out of the flexion and the side bend. Let the arms float down. Just give your arms and shoulders a little break. Ah, feels so good. And then we'll do the other side. So left arm over the top of the head. Catch that elbow. Make sure the neck is long. Posterior tilt in the pelvis. And off we go. Side bending to the right. Feeling how the left shoulder blade slides up and sinking down through the left bone. Then adding on a forward flexion, more in the upper mid thoracic spine. So you feel again, shoulder blade pulling up and away, uh, sit bone on the left sinking down, pull the elbow a little bit just to tension that left shoulder blade. Good. And then use all the pieces, the posterior tilt, the side bend, the flexion your breath, and a long neck, pulling the elbow. Good, we'll take two more breaths into our stretch. Good, try to find a way to soften into it as you go, even though you're doing all these things. And then just release the elbow a little bit and come out of the flexion and side bend. Arms come down, relaxing the shoulders. Nice work, everybody. Give your body a little wiggle wiggle. I want to go into a, a little stretch for the muscles along the spine because the lats are attached right along the spine and right underneath them we have these big spine muscles. So we take our legs out in front and it's kind of up to you what your knees do. They can either stay parallel with the feet or they can open. So whatever your hips prefer. Take your arms forward in external rotation extended wrists. I'm just going to turn away from you for a moment. But again, we're going to target this kind of region here. So all you're going to do is start to round forward, just like you did in the last stretch, rounding forward. Once you get about halfway down the spine, start to pull your belt line back, pull your lumbar spine back, pull your bottom rib back. So you're turning yourself into a wishbone, pulling forward and back at the same time exactly. Now relax your shoulders away from your ears. Draw the base of the skull back and lengthen the back of the neck. Yeah, so your head doesn't drop right off the spine. It's all one big curve. Keep breathing and use your arms to target your low back. So maybe lifting the arms a little bit, maybe pulling back on the sit bones a little bit more. See if you can get into that lower rib cage region. We'll hold for five. Four, see if both arms pull equally, both sides of the back pull back equally. Three. Two, one, let the arms come down and roll up through your spine. Wonderful. Okay, we have a couple of stretches left. We're going to now go towards the top of the lats because they make some connections with the lower trapezius and the rhomboids between the shoulder blades. So let's go into quadruped again. And I'll just show you really quickly. We're going to do the trapezius stretch but the one where you're going to reach kind of up and across. So instead of going threading the needle through, I'm actually going to reach up and across and put my shoulder and head down, and I'll have my arm on an upward angle. So let's all do the right side first. And what you're going to do is keep your left hand uh, where it is, and just with control, you're going to reach your right arm on an upward angle above your left hand, and try to get your right shoulder and the right side of your head on the floor. And just do some wiggling around there, get comfortable <laughs> as much as possible. And externally rotate, well, at least extend the right wrist so that the palm is flat. We're gonna tuck our chin quite a lot. And then what I want you to do is try to pull your lower ribs down towards your pelvis and try to make a cat back like a rounded back, but don't let your shoulder come off the floor, right? So that right shoulder stays on the floor and you're trying to flex the back, trying to make a cat back. Yeah, everybody looks like they got it. Yeah, so pull those bottom ribs back and up, maybe towards the ceiling, good, and away from the arm. So one more breath there. Good. Last little sec uh, second here. I want you to side bend your left hip towards your left shoulder a little bit, but keep the low back and the low ribs rounded up to the ceiling. 
Nice. One more breath. That looks really good. Okay. Release the side bend. Soften out of the twist. Come back onto your hands and knees. Ooh, good. Nicely done. So left side. Time for the left side. So we're on hands and knees equally. We're going to take that left arm and slide it on an upward angle past the right hand and the shoulder and the side of the head come on the floor. So you kind of have to adjust once you're down here. Make sure you feel like your right hand is helping you out a little bit and tuck your chin. This side might be easier or harder, so you do what you need to do. Now we're going to think about that left shoulder being down. Extend the left wrist so you're, you've got a stop sign hand. If you're already in a big stretch, you're just going to stay here, but tuck the pelvis and imagine that you could make a cat back with your spine. So if we were on hands and knees doing cat cow, you're trying to do the cat part with your low back and low ribs. Breathing into the stretch. Good. Here we go. Slight side bend, right hip towards right shoulder. So think about the bottom ribs pulling upwards and backwards into the cat spine. Good, nice deep breaths here. Left shoulder is heavy. Okay, we're gonna slowly come out. So relax the side bend, ease your way out. Oh, there's a lot of big rotation there. Good, okay, and come down and meet me lying on your right side. We're gonna have the uh, right arm forward with the side of your head on the floor. And if it's possible, I would prefer your legs staggered so that the inside of your left knee is down and the outside of your right leg is down. So you have both legs kind of on the floor. Yeah, exactly. So let me just take a second to make sure everybody's there. Good, now this hand, this left hand, goes into a bit of a kickstand again. So just put it kind of in front of your face for now with your elbow pointing up your palm flat. I want you to be rolled back a little bit so that you can feel your left or sorry, your right shoulder blade is on the floor. So feel the back of the right shoulder clearly on the floor. You're going to keep that. So anchor that arm and shoulder blade down. Keep your eyes forward for this one. And then all I want you to do is imagine that you could roll forward and pull your spine away from that anchored shoulder blade. So the spine is trying to round and move away from the shoulder blade that's stuck to the floor. So we're just gonna hang out here for a second. It's not a necessarily a super obvious stretch, but you wanna feel that the spine is pulling away from the shoulder blade on that right side. Hold for five. Four, three, two, one. And then just slowly relax the efforts in the spine and the arms. Good, take a nice breath. We're gonna do one more round. Just move your arm up a little bit. So just slide your right arm on a little bit of an angle so that maybe your palm is in line with your eyes. It's a pretty small angle. Good, and then the kickstand hand goes wherever you feel like it can help you out. Tuck your chin, but keep your eyes forward. Tuck your tail. Press the back of the right shoulder down onto the floor. And then start to imagine you're going to roll forward towards that arm. But the shoulder blade stays down. And the goal is to get the spine to move away from the shoulder blade. So just nice, easy breaths here. If you're like, I don't know what I feel, it's OK. Keep the shoulder blade anchored. Pull the spine away from the shoulder blade by imagining you would roll forward towards the arm. One more breath. And then you're just going to slowly release. And just to see if there's any difference side to side, let's lie on our back for a moment. Here you might want to do some windshield wipers with your knees. Relax your shoulders, relax your spine, and just notice, like, for example, we just stretch the right side. Is the right side of the rib cage a little heavier, especially kind of in that between the shoulder blades area? Ah, okay, and then we have to do the left side, of course. So you're going to lie on your left side. Okay, and we're going to take the left arm forward. 
and stagger the legs so that the top leg is uh, in front of the bottom leg, both knees are on the floor. Side of the head is on the floor, arm is straight out from the shoulder, and then you have a kickstand with your right hand. We tuck the chin, but eyes are looking forward, and we tuck the tail. You want to roll back enough that you can feel the back of your left shoulder very clearly on the floor. And then we're going to start to roll the, say, think about the right shoulder rolling forward. And it's going to pull the spine with it, but the left shoulder blade doesn't move. So you almost might feel like you're doing kind of part of a cat with the upper back. We're just going to keep breathing here. Remember the mechanics of it are left shoulder blade is anchored. Then the right shoulder is moving forward. The spine is rolling with the right shoulder forward. And we're creating some space between the spine and the left shoulder blade. Let's slowly back out of that tension and just move your arm up slightly. So it's now on a slightly higher angle. Shoulders are away from the ears here. Tuck the tail, tuck the chin, and begin again. So anchor the shoulder blade first, and then imagine this micro movement. You're going to roll forward towards that arm, but the shoulder blade is stuck. So just the spine and the kind of right side of the body are moving. Left side stays. Good. Nice, easy breaths here. Hmm, good. These muscles are deeper, so we might have to wait a moment to feel things moving or to even imagine what we're doing. One more breath, shoulder anchored, rolling forward. And then slowly release those tensions. Fly back down on your back for a moment. Oh, good. Let's hug the right knee into the chest and let the left leg stretch out. We'll just do, while we're here, a little assessment of the upper back, see how it feels. Breathe into the lower ribs, the low back, the low belly. Good, and then switch sides. So bring the left knee in and stretch the right leg out nice and long. Good, we kind of have a series of Eldoas now, and they're not necessarily all the easy ones. So just get ready. <laughs> We're going to do a bunch of seated Eldoas. So when you're ready, roll to your side and come on up. Let's get into those lower thoracic Eldoas, starting at the bottom at T12. So here you are. We're going to do lazy diamond legs. So the feet are relaxed, knees are at 90 degrees. And make sure your sit bones are spaced apart, so at least sit bone distance apart. Good. Wiggle on your sit bones. Good. We're going to start T12, so put your hands on your low ribs and just do that little bit of translation. Good. It's a little translation, but hopefully it feels pretty free. Good. And then we're going to take the right leg out wide, about 45 degrees, or if you're very flexible, you can do more. Keep your left leg relaxed. Flex your right foot. Turn your thigh in and invert your foot and take both arms out in front of you. We're going to push both hands forward against the wall, pull the bottom ribs back and up against the imaginary wall. Draw the chin in and look down with the eyes. Now anchor that right sit bone down. And in order to do that, you might have to stop yanking on the hip. So you might have to let the hip flexor soften a little, let the sit bone drop and then take the left arm straight up to your ear. So it's don't bring your head to your arm, bring your arm to your head. And then without changing anything, lower that right arm into your lap. And we're just gonna stay here for a few breaths. The goal is to keep your spine centered and straight, but your left arm is pulling up at the at a T12 level and your right leg is pulling down. Left arm is pulling you up on the left side, right leg is pulling you down on the right side, and you're just working to center that spine between the shoulder blades and through the low back. Yeah, looks really nice, everyone. Push the arm and the leg further away, reach the crown and tail a little taller, longer, and straighter. Good, now you're gonna bring the right arm down in front, or left arm down in front of you, 
Add your right arm in front, and then just bring your right leg into the lazy diamond. Make sure the heel doesn't cross the midline and take your left leg out to the side. Good, you're gonna flex your foot, turn the leg in and invert the foot. Drop that left sit bone down. So do what you need to do in the quadricep and the hip flexors to feel the left sit bone drop, and then take the right arm up towards your ear. Make sure you're still breathing. Good, use the right arm to lift up along the right side of the body from T12 up. Use the left leg to pull down the left side of the body and then relax your left arm into your lap. Eyes down, chin in. Good, you might have to work more or less on this side to keep the spine centered. So notice what you have to do. Can your arm be close to your head without your head side bending? Can your left sit bone sink into the ground and your left heel reach away? Good, and then what do you need to do between the shoulder blades, behind the sternum, and in the low back to center the spine? <laughs> Bless you, nice work, last three, and two. Good, and then bring that right arm down. Relax both legs into your diamond again. Close your eyes, and just stay relatively tall. Take two breaths in and out. We're gonna close our eyes so that we can send our breath into the lower ribs. T11, T12 area, because T11 is next. So open your eyes, take your arms forward. We'll make this one a little more flowy now that we know what's going on. Slide your right leg forward, but don't let your sit bone move. Flex your right foot, turn the leg in and invert the foot. Lift the left arm up to your ear and then open it wide to a V. Now this time the left arm is pulling up along the left side of the body. The right leg is, see, is reaching and sinking the right side of the body down. Relax the arm into the left. Good, push your head up, tailbone down. Take about five breaths here, turn the arm out and reach it away. Turn the leg in and pull it forward. Push the head up to the ceiling. Center your thoracic spine and lumbar spines. One more time to pull the arm away, pull the leg away and center the spine. Good, now take that left arm back up to your ear and down in front of you. Match the right hand with the left hand, both arms forward. Relax the right leg in, slide the left leg to straight, flex, turn in and invert. Find that sit bone. Take the right arm up by your ear. Good, left leg is forward, so right arm goes up. Open the arm out to the side. Release the left arm into your lap. Eyes looking down now. You're gonna pull the arm away from the uh, right side of the body. You're gonna pull the leg away from the left side of the body and then center the uh, lumbar spine, thoracic spine, upper thoracic spine, neck and head. Center the rib cage over the pelvis but pull those long limbs away a little more. Nice work, everybody looks really good. Hold for five. And four, good, feel like both sides of the waist are lengthening. Three, two, good, bring that arm down. Relax the legs, relax the spine. Give everything a little shake, shake, shake. Good, nicely done. Okay, we're gonna just do a quick T7 and then T8. So bring your knees in to your chest. Now we're working a little bit above the lats, but I think this is a really important one. So holding on to the shins, let's release just the right arm out in front. Bring it up by your ear and open it out into a nice V. Think about the chest coming forward towards the thighs and the head pushing up to the ceiling. Good, and then take your left arm out in front of you, bring it up towards your ear and open it out into a V. Chest forward, head up, thighs to chest. Now bring your right arm up to your ear, keep breathing. Bring it down and hold on to your shin. Reach your left arm more. Chest forward, head up, eyes down. Good, bring the left arm to the ear. Bring it down and hold on to the shins. Good, close your eyes and imagine your spine elongating even more, getting taller. Push your sit bones into the ground. Find all four corners of the feet, press them down. Good, now open your eyes, bring your feet almost to touching, so they're very close. The knees can be open. Reach one arm out at a time in front. 
Good, it's the power of belief now. Take the arms up to the ears, eyes looking down, open the arms out into a V, push the head up, chest forward, four corners of the feet down, breathe in behind the heart, breathe out and stretch the arms, grow the spine, breathing in and breathing out. And every time you breathe out, resist the temptation to collapse. In fact, add length as you exhale every time. Pull the arms out from behind you. Nice work, everyone. Excellent alignment of the ears, the sternum. Bring the knees closer and you have 10 seconds left. Nine, eight, seven. Grow taller and taller. Let the sit bones drop as the head reaches up. Three, two, bring the arms up to the ceiling. Push the ceiling away. Stay here. Walk your feet forward and apart until your knees are 90 degrees and your feet are about sit bone distance. Grow a little taller, sit up straighter. Good, press the arches of the feet down, turn your shins out and your thighs in, soften your sternum. Can you give me 10 seconds here? Nine, eight, arms close to the head. Bring the arms back to the ears, not the ears to the arms. Good, last five, four, nice work. Three, grow a little taller, two, one more effort. Bring the right arm down, put it beside your hip. Left arm down beside the hip. Great job. Slide your legs out. Relax your spine. Recline back and breathe. Wow, really nice work. That was a bit of a bit of a marathon. <laughs> okay, so take another moment here. We're gonna try a general Eldoa again, maybe just like four or six times. So two or three times each side, and see if we can get the back body to sort of settle. So when you're ready, <laughs> you get to lie down on your back. Okay. Huh. Okay, yeah, I want to stay here for the rest of the class, but we should do, we'll do general elbow. So bring your knees in over your chest. Hold on to the opposite shin and flex your feet. Good, shine your feet to the right, and then we'll begin. So taking the right arm back by the ear, spread the palm, turn the arm out, left leg stretches out, turn the thigh in, feel the back body nice and heavy, exhale the leg up, keeping the back body nice and flat and lengthened. Pull the leg in, bring the arm in, and then take the left arm by the ear, right leg long, both feet should be shining to the left and the right leg, the long leg, is turned in. Exhale the leg up to the ceiling, soft chest, and then fold the leg in. Keep going if you like your own breath pattern, your own pace, or you can follow along with me as well. We're keeping the sternum soft, exhaling when the leg comes up, and folding in, inhaling as you reach your left arm, right leg long. Notice how the back of the rib cage and that thoracolumbar area feel. See if it takes a little less effort this time to keep them nice and heavy and stretched out along the floor. Your left arm is gonna be the last one. So when your left arm is overhead, that's your last one. Take your time, there's absolutely no rush. We're gonna bring the legs in, relax the feet down. Good, and we'll just hang out here for a couple of breaths. Good, if you would like to stay here because you're feeling good and you're like, that's enough for my body, then hang out here. Otherwise, you can take your arms up to the ceiling. Externally rotate your arms, extend your wrists. Slide your right leg to straight, flexing the foot. Slide your left leg to straight, flexing the foot. No worries if this doesn't feel good, do something else. Turn the thighs in if you'd like and take the arms overhead. The goal for this one isn't to flatten the low back, but it is to soften the bottom ribs into the floor and to imagine that you could pull the hips and the ribs apart. Let the shoulders and the upper arms and the forearms and the wrists pull over the top end of your mat and let the thigh bones, shin bones and heel bones reach to the bottom edge of your mat and everything in between is softening and stretching. So we're breathing and softening the body as we stretch. Last five, 
four, let the whole torso elongate with a soft sternum. Then the arms come up to the ceiling first and they rest down by the sides. The legs come out of tension. If you'd like, you can bring the knees in, feet flat, butterfly legs, long legs, whatever feels good. And we'll take at least three belly breaths here. You can also do constructive rest position, knees together, feet apart. Check that the shoulders have released, that the face muscles are relaxed. Good, safe from this heavy. Nice. Stay and breathe. Let everything soften. Great. Nice.